Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 364. Prepare to embark on a journey with today's most inspiring entrepreneurs. Be adventurous, be enterprising, and triumph. Are you ready to focus? Alpha Brain, the one stop powerhouse for helping the body boost neurotransmitter levels and bring the mind to the top of its game, can help. Get 10% off your supplement purchase by going to onit.com slash fire. O N N I T dot com slash fire. Entreport is all in one business automation software, but that's not all. They also bring the heat with world class customer service, enabling entrepreneurs to easily build their businesses faster. Find out how Entreport can help your business at entreport.com slash fire. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Savita Rao. Savita, are you prepared to ignite? Yes, I am. All right. Savita is an entrepreneur, mother, and lover of handicrafts. She is passionate about food, eating, cooking, and helping others enjoy healthy, tasty meals. I've given Fire Nation just a little overview, Savita, but Take a minute. Tell us about you, you personally. We want to get to know you. Then give us an overview of your business. Well, thank you, John. Um, I, as you said, I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, I am right now doing Recipe Sack, which uh, makes meal kits. We provide all the ingredients except perishables such as meat, vegetables, and dairy. And everything's pre-measured and comes with a detailed recipe. So anyone interested in experimenting with different types of cuisines can take it home and cook from scratch. There are no preservatives. The idea is that it shouldn't be very expensive to try different types of cuisines. And, you know, the wastage after when you go and buy all these different ingredients, the spices, what are you going to do with the things that are left? You have all these storage issues and then invariably they end up in your trash can. And that's what we are trying to avoid. We want people to experiment, feel comfortable, the the Cost should not be a barrier and make it very easy because some recipes you look it up in a book or online and not everybody is familiar with everything. Everybody does not have all the gadgets and the tools that are required. What we are trying to do is doesn't matter if you are someone who's living in a group home or a dorm or you have a full-fledged kitchen, you should be able to cook it. You should be able to open the meal kit and uh, cook a fantastic meal for your family. Savita, I love the passion that you're already exuding on this call. I mean, just for the listeners so they can make sure that they understand exactly what this site is called. It's Recipe Sack. And Savita, what I love is that I can just see you sitting there having all these extra spices and either throwing them away or on the verge of doing it and being like, there's got to be a better way. There must be other people out there like me who have all these leftover stuff. And there's a way to utilize that and to, to make it into a product that solves this pain point. So I commend you for that. You are an entrepreneur. And I'm really excited to dive more into everything about Recipe Sack. But before we do, I'd like to hear a little more about you, like where you're from, family. Just give us a little personal stuff. I grew up, I was born and I grew up in Bangalore and uh, that's in India. And I uh, remember very clearly when I was, I think, 19 or 20, I remember sitting and thinking, what is it that I want to do? Because I've always been passionate about many different things. I like to sew. I do a lot of different types of handicrafts. And uh, the Tatas and the Birlas, they are the equivalent of the Rockefellers. They 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 excited me. They uh, inspired me. I would, I would be the geek kid who read all the financial and economic <laughs> times, not any of the gossip mags. And I would be like... I, I, was, I was sitting there. I can clearly see where I was. I was on the terrace of my parents' uh, home and thinking, what is it I want to do in life? And the answer was very clear. I wanted to create a, a business organization or empire, if you will, that would allow me to explore and make successes of each of my passions and thinking, how am I going to get there? And 
the idea of being able to communicate my ideas clearly was very important to me. I did not come from a family that had any kind of background in business. So coming from this conservative middle class background and thinking I want to be an entrepreneur, that itself is very radical. But there I was. And so I I studied communication, uh, specifically organizational communication and public relations. I came to this country to do my master's degree. And then I went to work at a um, public relations agency. And then I worked as an independent PR consultant, my first entrepreneur. Well, not really my first, because I had my first entrepreneurial gig when I was about 20 years old. But I did work as a PR consultant for quite some time, and then um, it was time to re-engage with work. I took a three-year break when my second child was born. I have two kids, so hence the mother part of it is very (laughs) important to me. And then I was trying to decide, do I want to go back to PR? What do I want to do? What is the one thing that really, really is going to excite me, inspire me? And I maintain this book where I write down all the business ideas or just ideas that come to my mind. I was looking through everything and I, uh, coming from the PR background, I, I wanted something different. I wanted a product and I love making things. And around this time, I had been experimenting with different cuisines. There was a time when I was very interested in Japanese cuisine and then there was Mexican and just as you described, I have all these ingredients and I don't know what to do because sometimes your family doesn't like certain things. And then what are you going to do? You can't just go to a store and say, I need one teaspoon of this. So can I buy that? It's not always possible. So I have 400 grams of something and I've used one teaspoon. So what am I going to do with the rest? And also I like to cook a lot and Thankfully, I like my cooking and most other people do. So I had people asking me, so how do you do this? Give me the recipe. And then they would be like, um, where do I get this? So it was, it, it, it was really a nice confluence of things at that time. And as I like to believe, the universe conspired to lead me to this moment to start Recipe Sack. And it was a fantastic idea. And the more I talked and explained my idea to people, it, it everybody was so excited about it and there we are it i launched recipe sack i tested it in um late 2011 and it's been fantastic since then i love this story savita for so many reasons i love the phrase the universe conspired and i love the fact that you went out and you started talking to other people who were your target market people who needed something like Recipe Sack and they were excited about it and they were doing all these really crazy things that just seemed really inspiring and fun and you wanted just to add to that. So I can definitely see that being of incredible value on so many levels when you ended up creating Recipe Sack that was fitting their needs. So I commend you for that entrepreneurial venture. And Savita, this is where we transition to the success quote because we really want to keep this motivational ball rolling that you have started down this hill, started in India, came to America, and now you're rolling. So take it away. This really had me thinking and uh, the universe conspires. That's one of my favorite quotes. But for now, I think the one that I want to share with your audience is do your best. And by this, I mean, this involves thinking clearly, what is it that you're trying to achieve? Realizing that it's not you alone trying to do this. You have your family, your friends, your kids, a lot of people in this. You, There are a lot of people on this ride with you. And so looking at the opportunities at hand and looking at the constraints, taking it into account all, everything that's out there very realistically and then doing, doing and do is one of my favorite verbs. You have to do in order to achieve something, to be successful at it and do it, do your best means just give it. If, if, some, if the exact same thing were to be reconstructed, you should be able to say, I did my best. You have to give your all. Sometimes you meet your goals. Sometimes you don't. But this mantra or quote 
it basically has saved me many a times because otherwise, you know, I get all stressed out. Oh, I have to meet this deadline. I have to do this. But then I have kids who rely on me. I have a family who relies on me. I can't get all stressed out and take it out on them. But realizing this, here's my goal. Here are my resources. Here are my constraints. And I am going to do the best taking all this into account. And then I'm happy. I'm happy because I did my best. There's nothing else I can do. If I met my goal, fine. If I didn't, there's always another opportunity because this is not the end. This is you doing your best every single second of your life. Savita, there are so many golden nuggets to pull out of there, but the one I want to focus on is your love of the word do. And a phrase that I truly love to share with Fire Nation is, if you want to be, do. And it's really a simple phrase, but it's really so powerful because if you want to be someone, if you want to do something, it is really that simple. If you want to be do. I wanted to be a host of a business podcast. So what did I do? I actually took the action required. You wanted to create this wonderful company, Recipe Sack. So what did you do? You took the action required. It's not going to be a straight line of success. There's going to be bumps. There's going to be ups and downs. But if you continue to just do, then great things are going to come with that consistency, with that persistence. And on that note, Savita, I want to move the spotlight to you as an entrepreneur, you're our spotlighted guest today. And Entrepreneur on Fire is about your journey. Just as I mentioned, it's not always a straight road to success. There are bumps along the way, and you've definitely hit those yourself. Share with us a time when you failed or when you just faced this massive obstacle. And what lessons did you learn from that, Savita? Well, since we're talking about Recipe Sack, I want to share something uh, that I really, you know, hit major roadblock or uh, and as I mentioned I tested my products late 2011 and uh, I got awesome awesome feedback consistently everybody was very excited but there were a few uh, nitpicking comments if you will that I started to focus on uh, a bit too much and it was like oh What am I going to do about it? I have to have everything perfect. And then I started thinking, okay, uh, people uh, want to see my product in the uh, the store shelves. How am I going to get about it? And I start talking to some retailers and realize they want 50% commission, 50% of profit. But in order, one of my goals for Recipe Sack is you should be able to feed your family a healthy meal for as much as it would cost a grande or venti chai at your local coffee shop. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, uh, so I have not included, or up until now, I hadn't included any of the labor costs, and I'm already not breaking even, and people want 50%, which I can do. So all these things, they just snowball in my head and became so big that I lost focus and I I tested it in 2011 I have been uh, trying out and experimenting new products to launch but it's late 2012 almost 12 months have passed by not one sale I haven't sold anything since my first beta test And that's because I lost focus. I got so bogged down with, I have to do this. I have to do that. How will I get there? I need X amount of dollars to be successful. And then I I took a deep breath. I said, okay, stop, stop this. Let's regroup. Let's see what, what are the goals here? What is my goal? My goal for now is to prove that the product is a success. The concept is great. And I deliberately wanted to stay under the radar as far as marketing was concerned, because I wanted to make sure that I had a product that would work consistently because cooking is both an art and a science. If you don't turn the heat down at a precise point, then the rice will be a bit more drier. So I had to take all these constraints into mind, into account and then say, my goal is not to be in a store shelf now. That is maybe down the road. It's not right now. Right now, what are my goals? My goals right now 
are to be break even and make a small profit so I can start paying myself a salary, hiring more people because this is not just about Indian food. Recipe Sack is about anybody wants to experiment any kind of cuisine, there is a meal kit for that, which means I need to hire experts who can help me create these meal kits with different cuisines, which means I need to be selling enough to hire somebody. And again, I was not ready to go seek external funding. And I have been, my husband's been one of my greatest supporters. We have been funding it from our retirement fund. So I had to take all these constraints and these resources that I had. I have a great customer base. I have awesome, awesome cheerleaders who cheer me on every single day. And all these resources and constraints. And I said, okay, let's think. Let's make a plan. Let's break it down to individual goals that I can achieve and do my best every single day. And I started doing that late December 2012. I would say it was just a week before Christmas. I had this uh, plan all mapped out. I had it pinned on my bulletin board and I every day I look at it. I say, okay, this today I'm going to do this. And I can tell you I have achieved so much these past eight months than the whole one and a half year combined. And and I attribute that to, you know, do your best. Do your best every single day. And, you know, don't stress about what you couldn't accomplish today. You did your best. Wake up tomorrow and go at it again. And and it's it's been great. It's been really, really great. Savita, once again, there are just so many great nuggets to pull out of there. But one that I really want to focus on is why you had those struggles, because you did focus on a couple of these nitpicking things that really weren't that important. And that's why it's so great for the listeners to hear this story, because Savita, what she really realized that she should have done was just go out to her target market that was excited, that wanted this product, and ask them for feedback and not try to be perfect. Just give them the base product, and then have the customer tell her exactly what could be improved and what they would like to see, and then to have Savita continue to improve and pivot and tweak the product to what her best customers would want and not get bogged down with the negativity, because she she lost focus. Luckily, she was able to regain it and move forward. And that, again, comes from the power of having a supportive team around you. And Savita mentioned her very supportive husband, which is so key. So, so many great lessons to pull out of their Fire Nation. And Savita, just boil it down in one sentence. Let's just do this overall takeaway from that massive obstacle that you faced. Share that one sentence with Fire Nation. Do your best every single day. Make a plan and do your best to achieve your goals every single day. Savita, so well said. And let's kind of get out of this section right here, which is the the challenges and the obstacles that are so valuable and we learn so much and, and move to the other end of the spectrum, which is the aha moment, the light bulb that goes off. And at some point in your journey and multiple times, Savita, you've been inspired. You've, you've had an aha moment. Take us to that very moment and tell us that story. Then tell us about the steps you took afterwards to turn that aha moment into success. As I'd mentioned, I have a lot. I'm passionate about a lot of things. I I sew, I knit, I uh, like to do calligraphy, and um, I want to pursue these passions. And I believe in the earn while you le- uh, earn while you learn. I want to explore this, and if possible, earn while I'm learning some of these things. Some I have learned, some I'm still learning, and. Again, as I was doing, uh, focusing and getting recipe sack off the ground, I started thinking, oh, I should do this. I should have do some more sewing. I should have uh, do calligraphy, have greeting cards, sell it at this holiday boutique. So I was trying to do a lot of different things. And I, I have always admired Richard Branson because he he is doing, he is successful in a variety of industries that are not really related to each other. When you, when I talk about the Tatas and the Birlas, you know, somebody's already established that for them and the next generation is taking it forward. But Richard Branson, one man created this huge success 
And I want to do that. I want to I want to create successful businesses that not just sustains me, but, you know, is going to help a few other people. There's uh, there's a blessing that Indian parents give whenever you take blessings from them, which loosely translates to, you know, live a good life by being good to yourself and helping a few other people. And that is very key to me. I want to create a business that is going to not just help me, but help a few other people be successful as well. So I have been focusing on too many things, trying to do this, trying to do that, and getting very frustrated because as I was telling you about the roadblock I faced with Recipe Sack, all along I'm I'm trying to do a bit of sewing, a little bit of calligraphy and all that, and nothing was panning out. It's not going anywhere and I was getting very frustrated and I read a lot of lot of material blogs books magazines and I take inspiration from whatever source uh, appeals to me and I would read about this woman in Australia who had a dream of founding an organic garden but she's a knitter she likes to sew and and she is making a good living out of it and I would be like oh she is doing it why am I not doing it getting very frustrated mm-hmm. and then one day and I think this was again in 2012 and I wrote it on the notebook that I use every single day I wrote don't spend your life watching other people live it wow don't spend your life watching other people live it and that to me was a major aha moment. It was it was like focus, pick a focus. What is it that appeals to you the most? What is going to get you closer to your goal of being successful for yourself and for others? The fastest and most realistically. That to me is recipe sack. That's a proven idea. I have I have proved the product, the concept is solid, and it's been proved this past eight months. And so I decided at that moment, this is what I am going to focus on. I am not going to just sit there, read about other successful people and get frustrated that mine, my ideas, my life wasn't getting as successful as I wanted it to be. So with that in mind, I started taking steps on, uh, I had mentioned about the 50% commission. So I said, okay, I don't, I can't give 50% commission right now. What can I do about it? And one of the ideas I had was to create opportunities for myself by uh, with, by collaborating with other entrepreneurs. I have created these trunk shows. Basically, they are uh, private parties where we invite a lot of our friends and all of us bring samples of our products. And, you know, people like to support local business owners. So they come, they do their shopping. We have a fabulous spread of food and it's fantastic. They're having fun. They're shopping. We are expanding our customer base. So that's just one idea of how my aha moment helped me create new markets for myself without having to give up 50% of my uh, sales, without losing any income. I'm creating more markets for myself, but that also without me realizing, very organically incorporated another passion of mine, which is to create these small artisanal groups or or, uh, a collaboration of artists and people who do handicrafts. So they have an avenue to directly sell their uh, products to people, to people who want to support uh, entrepreneurs and artists who do handicrafts and products with their own hands and not something that's been, you know, produced somewhere in some foreign land. So without me realizing it, I am helping a few other entrepreneurs. And it was very, very satisfying, very gratifying when one of them thanked me and said, you know what, if it hadn't been for you reaching out to me, then I wouldn't have been able to sell this. So, you know, my aha moment not only helped me, but it's helping five other entrepreneurs from Mountain View. So I think that's that's what I want to share with your uh, audience is that sometimes you just need to focus, be realistic, make a plan, and then give it your best. 
Savita, you are tugging on my heartstrings right now with your use of the word focus. As Fire Nation knows, it is my favorite word, and there's a powerful acronym behind that word. Do you know what that acronym is? I don't, actually. Focus. Follow one course until success. Oh, wow. Awesome. That is yours to use as you please. I love sharing that with Fire Nation on Entrepreneur on Fire. It's a powerful acronym, and you have just shown us why. Now, let's take a minute to thank our sponsors. Three of my favorite S words, all in one neat little package. Start, systemize, scale. Pretty important concepts, right? Okay, so you must know how to start after listening to Entrepreneur on Fire all this time. But what about systemizing and scaling your business? Systemizing and scaling your business are both integral to your success. If you're not able to manage your workflow and platforms easily, then you'll start to feel frustrated and burnt out real quick. And scaling? Well, who doesn't want to find the best ways to scale their business? What if I told you there's one simple solution to achieving these three S-words? Entreport is a business operating system that combines sales, marketing, and business automation tools, providing a streamlined platform designed to give entrepreneurs like you the powerful technology you need, minus the anxiety and frustration. Entreport is also supported by award-winning, world-class customer service, which ensures you'll have help every step of the way. Go to entreport.com slash fire today to find out more. Now, I may not be all American. I'm actually 80% French, 20% English, just an FYI. But I do try my absolute best to stay all natural when it comes to what I'm putting in my body. I believe that taking care of your body and maintaining a healthy lifestyle is absolutely necessary to achieving success. Why? If you're not treating your body right, then why would you expect it to treat you right? Of all the things you need to work right in your body, your brain has to be the most important. But it's not very often we think about providing our brain with the key nutrients to support peak performance. Lucky for us, this company, Onnit, has created a flagship supplement designed to make it easy to give your brain everything it needs to function at above optimal levels. It's called Alpha Brain, and ever since I started using it, I live by it. You can get 10% off your supplement purchase right now by going to onnit.com slash fire, O-N-N-I-T dot com slash fire. And Savita, this is a perfect segue to what is my favorite part of the show, the lightning rounds. And this is where I get to ask you a series of questions and you come back at us Fire Nation style with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Sounds great. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? I don't think anything was holding me back. I have been risk averse in in that respect. I'm I'm pro risk. I'm eager to jump in with both feet, but the thing that was holding me back from being truly successfully an entrepreneur was doing too many things at a time. Yeah. Forgetting that there are many other aspects of my life already clamoring for my time and attention and not being able to focus. That was holding me back from being a successful entrepreneur. Oh, love that. What is the best advice you've ever received? Not necessarily business, but the best advice I have received, two of them. One, focus on one thing at a time. And that to me didn't make sense to me when when the person who I didn't know gave it to me. It was like, what are you talking about? But it makes a <laughs> lot of sense to me now. Focus on one passion at a time. And the second thing that my dad always said, live within your means. And this, I think, is really important as an entrepreneur because I see, I live in Mountain View. I see a lot of entrepreneurs. I read uh, about them. I meet them. It's either like put all your life savings in it, go broke, get homeless for that, you know, million dollar deal you may or you may not get and the exit you may or you may not get. But be an entrepreneur, take risks, knowing what your limitations are. You be be enterprising, but know what your limitations are. Just do it, but be realistic about it. 
Live within your means. So well said. And I love the theme that's developed, Savita, throughout this interview. And I love when themes do develop. And the theme of this interview is that word focus, is don't get distracted by that bright, shiny object syndrome that grips so many entrepreneurs. Because yes, we live in exciting times, Fire Nation. There's a lot of exciting things going on. But let other people chase those exciting things. You know what your passions are. You know which passions of those could make viable businesses Really focus in on one of those and just give it your all and really put your passion in your heart in a very responsible way that Savita just cautioned. So Savita, can you share one of your personal habits that you believe attributes to your success? Hands down organization. I am a major uh, list maker and I may forget to buy bread and eggs occasionally, (laughs) but, but when it comes to work, whether it was me as a PR consultant helping another company or whether when it comes to work, I am extremely focused. I am very organized. And that has helped me immensely. That has helped me be successful at whatever it is that I am doing, was doing at that point in time. Savita, do you have an internet resource like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? I use Doodle a lot. It's an internet service where uh, you can poll people and it's very helpful for scheduling meetings. Um, I get very irritated when 10 emails fly back and forth to schedule a time for a conference call or a meeting. So I use Doodle a lot. I just say, okay, here are the days and times I am available. Pick one that's available. And this works well when you have more than one person you are talking to or meeting with at a time. It's fantastic. Absolutely. I mean, I live and die by my favorite tool, which is Schedule Once Savita. And that's a tool that's incredibly powerful as well. And I would definitely suggest you check that out because maybe that has some features that Doodle doesn't. And likewise, I'm going to check out Doodle because I'm always looking for other options like a schedule once that are powerful and have some different things that I maybe am lacking with my personal tool because those back and forth emails are nothing but a waste of time. But when you have a scheduler like a Doodle, like a schedule once, it is a game changer. And Fire Nation, You can find the links to this resource and everything that we've mentioned in today's episode by going to eofire.com slash Savita Rao. Savita, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. And I know it's not a business book, but I have purchased so many copies of this and given it to so many people and recommended it. Um, I really, really take a lot of inspiration from some of the uh, passages in this book. And uh, if I may, I would like to point your listeners to page 34 of The Alchemist, which talks about, you know, uh, how you need to pursue happiness, but you can't forget what you have on hand. And I think that fits with the theme very well is go for it, but be rooted in reality and Alchemist is it. Such a powerful book, Savita, one that I love. And it's one of those books that when you start reading it and you understand the message of the book, you absolutely cannot wait until you get to the end because it's just so well written and you just know that something big waiting at the end and you just don't know what it is. And then it hits you like a load of bricks. And I love that book for so many reasons. And Fire Nation, I know that you love audio. So if you just want to listen to this book, you can get the audio version of this book for free if you haven't done so already at eofirebook.com. That's eofirebook.com. So Savita, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world, identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have, your food and shelter taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? I would buy and locate a place to grow a garden. I would grow flowers and I would grow, plant a lot of uh, vegetables. So if it's not me that's going to enjoy it after the seven days, maybe somebody else will. 
Powerful, Savita. Always giving. I love that message. I love the themes that developed on focus and live within your means and just so many great golden nuggets. And I just want to say thank you for sharing your story, Savita. And if you could give Fire Nation just one parting piece of guidance, share the best way that we can find you and your company, and then we'll say goodbye. My company is at recipesack.com, and you can always reach me at savita at recipesack.com. Wonderful. And give us one parting piece of guidance. Don't let anybody stop you from achieving your goals. Plan, plan properly. Take into account all the resources you have and look at the constraint and go for it. Give it your best. Give it your best. And if you're not successful today, it's okay because there's always tomorrow and you can do your best again tomorrow. Oh, Savita, Fire Nation is well aware. They can find the links to all of these golden nuggets you strewn throughout this interview at eofire.com. Click on the podcast tab. You are hanging out there in the archives. We also have an amazing search bar. You can just type in the words, R-A-O, and Savita will pop right up. Savita, thank you for being so generous with your time, your experience, your expertise. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, John. A friend of mine recently released an online product using a new merchant account. He started receiving emails from customers that the system wasn't processing payments, but when he tried to reach his merchant support team, they were unavailable because it was after hours. Any questions regarding your store will be handled quickly by Shopify's 24-hour customer support team. Ready to switch? Get a free 14-day trial and 20% off for life at shopify.com slash fire. Thank you so much for joining us today on Entrepreneur on Fire. Head on over to eofire.com for full recaps of every show, our amazing blog articles and resources, and just plain fun. Your entrepreneurial journey awaits, so prepare to ignite. 